Are you living in China or planning a trip to China? Or maybe you're planning to move to China to do some business. Maybe you're planning on taking a teaching position in China. There's any number of reasons why you may be planning to go there. Now, first and foremost, I want to let you know that if you do go to China, or if you are currently there, and as long as you're a nice, level-headed person, you treat others with respect, the chances of anything bad happening to you are very, very low. Typically, people won't just come up to you in China and start trouble. It's not the kind of place where people will generally come up to you and pick a fight for no reason. And there aren't any really, like, bad neighborhoods in China. Yes, some areas are a lot wealthier than others, but even if you go to somewhere poor, still generally the people are going to have a certain warmness and kindness that they show you. And I am contrasting that from my country, the United States, where most of the country is extremely, extremely safe, but we do have some bad neighborhoods, neighborhoods you just want to stay away from, where crime is rampant and it is literally dangerous. And something else that you may have heard about, there has been a massive increase in nationalist sentiment. And nationalism at this point is pretty close to reaching a boiling point. Now, the bad part about that is that a lot of people within China will harbor negative emotions, opinions, and they might even have some resentment or hostility toward foreigners. Also, the economy here has been slowing down, and it seems that things are starting to boil over a little bit. I mean, we're seeing more and more of these knife attacks. We recently saw four Americans stabbed in northeastern China. Then we saw a Japanese woman and her daughter attacked at a school bus stop, and it looks like the attacker, who was a Chinese nationalist, was trying to get onto the bus to ostensibly attack more children. Things could have been very ugly, but a Chinese woman stepped in to try to help. Unfortunately, she lost her life in the process, but she saved many others, most likely, and because of that, we have to pay her our respect and remember her as a hero. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into this list. It's going to be 15 words and phrases that you can use if you are in any kind of a bad situation, even if you just bump into somebody accidentally on the street. You can turn that negative situation into a positive one just by saying something polite. But the list also includes a lot of language that can be used if you are in a bad situation, if you are in trouble, and even if you are in danger. All of these words and phrases will also be included in the video description. So if you travel to China, you could even take a screenshot of this and save it on your phone just in case a situation arises where it could come in handy. Chinese is a tonal language, so it's going to be new to a lot of you to try to get these tones right. But I do encourage you to pay attention and try to do your best because in Chinese, tones are important. Number one on the list is Bu Hao Yi Se. Bu hao yi se. And this can mean excuse me or sorry. It has kind of a flexible meaning. So if you're walking down the street, you accidentally bump into somebody, you could look at them with a kind expression on your face and say, Bu hao yi se. Also, if you need to interrupt someone to say something, you could start by saying, oh, excuse me. And you could use this word in that situation as well. Number two on the list, dui bu qi, dui bu qi. That just specifically means sorry. It's a stronger, more clear way of saying, I'm sorry. So maybe you're in China, you're trying to get on the subway, it's crowded, you accidentally step on somebody's foot while you're boarding the train. You could look at that person and sincerely say, Dui bu qi. And chances are they will gladly forgive you. Number three on the list. This one's a little bit longer. It's more of like a short sentence. Zhe shi yi ge wu hui. That means this is just a misunderstanding. So maybe you're in a situation where the language barrier is causing some issues. You can feel the situation start to escalate. Tensions are starting to rise. You can reset the situation and cool things off by saying this. This is a misunderstanding. Number four on the list, this is to be used when you are in a seriously bad situation and you need to say, help, help. And I have repeated this same word twice because that's more than likely how you would want to use it. You wouldn't just say it once, just like in English, you'd say, help, help. And not the help, like, oh, could you please help me carry this bag? No, this means like, help, I'm in trouble. And that is, jiu ming, jiu ming. Again, that is to be reserved for serious situations where you are truly in a bad situation and really need help. Number five on the list, 
报警 and that means call the police. You could say this if you really need someone to do that. Maybe you're hurt. Maybe someone has threatened you or assaulted you. You could just say out loud, "Bao jing." Now, whether anyone would or not, that's hard to say. A lot of times in China, when trouble happens, people are very standoffish and they don't want to get involved. So, just because you ask someone to call the police doesn't mean that they would. But also, just by saying this, the person who is causing you trouble might feel alarmed and even scared by you saying this, because that might kind of help them to snap out of the rage that they're in and realize, oh shoot, the police are going to get involved, and this could be very, very bad for me. So, just by you saying "bao jing." It could help you get out of a bad situation, but again, don't use it loosely. Only use it for very serious situations. Number six on the list: maybe you're out shopping, maybe you're at a restaurant. Let's just say things are not going well, and you need to speak with someone higher up. First, I would recommend saying "lao ban zai na," "lao ban zai na." That means where's the boss? And when you say that, the listener will know that you're wanting to speak to the boss. So let's say, for example, if you are in a restaurant and there's a problem between you and the server, and you say that,、uh, the server's probably going to get kind of scared because they know that、uh, you're looking for the boss. Now, if the person you're speaking to tells you that the boss is not there, you could change it to 经理在哪儿？经理在哪儿 ？Where's the manager? So besides the boss, basically the next highest person up. Number seven on the list in China, taxis are very, very common. There are very good services like DD, which is essentially something very similar to Uber, cab hailing services. But if you're just here on travel, you might not have all the apps. You might not know how to use it. So chances are you will find yourself in a taxi more than once. Taxis here are everywhere. They're very affordable, extremely convenient. But sometimes, if the driver can tell that you're a newbie, and they're going to see that you're a foreigner, they're going to assume that there are a lot of things that you won't know about the local area. Let's say you get into the taxi and things are not going well. Maybe you feel that you're getting the runaround, and the driver is just driving around and around to try to rack up the meter. That way, you have to pay more when you arrive at your destination, or for whatever reason, if you don't feel safe in the cab, if you don't like the cab driver's attitude, if they insist on smoking cigarettes and you really don't want them to, whatever the case is, if you want them to stop the car so you can get out, you just say this: 停车停车停停停 means stop, and 车 means car. So you could say something like 停车停停 stop the car, stop stop. And if you really need to get out, and your Chinese is not that good, you could just keep saying that until the car finally comes to a stop, and then you can make your decision on what your next move is. Now, the next two phrases will be something kind of related to that, and other situations as well, but used for situations where you may have been cheated or scammed. So, for number five, we learned "bao jing," call the police. Now that's a pretty serious thing to say if you've been scammed by a taxi driver. But if you're really, really put out and you know that you have been cheated, by saying that, it will either scare the taxi driver and get him to shape up his behavior, or it will really piss him off. So it's a tricky situation when you're in something like this. It might be better to just cut your losses, pay the guy with the meter says, and just get out of the situation. But if you're just not willing to do that and you can't accept what has happened. You could consider number eight. This is the simplest way to say it. 我要投诉 I want to file a complaint. I want to report you. 我要投诉 And this isn't only something that could be used with taxi drivers. This could be used with a restaurant, with any type of business that you feel that you have been wronged by, or if you're just getting terrible service or any kind of problem. You can use this. Wo yao to su, and there actually is a national hotline in China, a very convenient one to call, and it's basically a catch-all. We're going to get to that one in number ten. But when you say wo yao to su, there's a good chance that they might assume you're going to call that government hotline, and trust me, they do not want to be reported. Number nine is also something that could be used in a situation where a taxi driver has given you the runaround, or maybe you've tried to buy something but they have overcharged you and obviously cheated you. And that is this: 我被骗了。我被骗了。You can kind of think of this phrase in this way: 
I've been cheated, or I've been scammed, or I've been ripped off, or I've been lied to. It's a very flexible phrase. Number 10. Now this gets to that catch-all national hotline. You can dial this number from anywhere in China, and the number is 12345. Doesn't get any easier to remember than that. So if you're having any kind of issue and you tell the person that you're speaking with that you are going to call 12345, they will all know what phone number this is. They know that it's the national hotline and they know that you are likely calling to report them. So they will take this seriously. So number 10 is 我要打一二三四五. This is good for your Chinese counting as well. 我 meaning I. 要 am going to. 我要 Da. This can mean hit, but in this situation it means dial. 我要打一二三四五. One, two, three, four, five. The tones are a little tricky on e, r, san, si, wu. So if you screw up the tones on that part, they'll still get it because if you say it quickly with just no consideration for the tones, it just sounds something like e, r, san, si, wu. Now saying that right there, I know that my tones were not accurate. I just said it really, really quickly without really thinking about the tones. They would still understand what I meant. And if you call this hotline, you can report any kind of issue. And I have actually used it in the past. I needed to use it a few times during COVID because I was facing harassment and discrimination. And this happened on multiple occasions. And every time I called that hotline, the people on the other end of the line were extremely polite. They were helpful. They told me they would look into the situation and they always got back to me in a relatively short period of time. It may have been a couple days or so, but they always followed through. They looked into the situation. They took some form of action and then they got back with me. So I've had nothing but good experiences using that hotline. It's not something you want to overuse, but in situations where you feel that you genuinely need to report something, it is there to be used. Number 11. 别碰我. Don't touch me. 别碰我. 别碰我. Maybe you're in a taxi and you rode in the front seat. If you've watched my videos on safety in China, you would know you should always ride in the back seat. But especially if you're a female and you are in the front seat, if the taxi driver reaches over and puts his hand on your leg, you could say, 别碰我. Don't touch me. And that will probably kind of scare him. Because he'll realize that you're not into it and you know what's up. And by you speaking to him in his own language will probably scare him quite a bit. But this can also be used if someone is just pointing at you and putting their finger in your chest. Or if they grab your shoulder, grab your arm, or even if they hit you. Just any type of touching. And even if they act like they're going to. You could use this. Don't touch me. Number 12 takes number 11 to the next step. And this is if you're wanting to say what happened. He or she hit me. Ta, which can mean he or she. It's a different character in Chinese, but the pronunciation is the same. Ta means he or she. Ta da wa. So if you're outside and someone did put their hands on you and hit you, or even pushed you really hard, you could just say this out loud and people would hear and they would kind of know the situation. Ta da wa. Number 13. If someone steals something from you, maybe they walk past and snatch your purse, maybe they pick your pocket. Maybe you set your bag or camera down while you're doing something outside and somebody snatched it and you need to shout, thief, thief. The word for thief is xiao to, and you would repeat that twice. Thief, thief, because we wouldn't just say it once, right? Xiao to, xiao to. That will alert everyone around to the situation, and there might even be some police officers around that will hear you and could take action and hopefully get your belongings back and catch the perpetrator. Number 14, if you're in a situation in China where you get hurt in any kind of way, maybe it's your own fault. Maybe you fell down a flight of stairs. Maybe you got drunk and fell over and hit your head on the concrete. Maybe you were riding a bicycle and you accidentally fell down and got hurt. Or maybe another person hit you, maybe a car hit you, and you need to say, I'm injured. In Mandarin, that would be, 我受伤了. I'm injured, I'm injured. And then number 15, this is primarily for you ladies out there. If you are traveling in China and you feel that someone is sexually harassing you, making some very unwelcome, unwanted, explicit type of remarks, just something that you feel is blatant and obvious sexual harassment. And I don't mean if he tells you that you look pretty or beautiful. This wouldn't work for that. But I'm talking about if he starts making comments about your body parts, your features, and you know what kind of features I'm talking about, and you really start to feel uncomfortable 
to say sexual harassment in Chinese would be xing sao rao. Xing sao rao. That means sexual harassment. If you said that, it would probably scare the heck out of the guy that was bothering you, and it would alert people who were around you to the situation. And again, this isn't something that should be used lightly. This is a very serious accusation, but sometimes serious situations can arise, and it might be important to know this. Well, there you have it. There are 15 words and phrases that you can use in bad, dangerous, or emergency situations in China to help you avoid a problem, to help you get out of a problem, or to help you get help from experiencing a problem. Of course, this list could go on and on. I could add so many things, but I don't want to make it too long. If you have any specific requests of things you would like to know, you could let me know in the comment section below, and I'll try my best to get back with you. And again, I do want to reiterate, if you come to China for travel, and if you're a nice person who uses common sense and you treat other people like you would want to be treated, you treat them politely with respect, chances are you're going to experience nothing but kindness and niceness from the locals here, for the most part. But it's that rare situation where you could be stuck in a bad situation and these things just happen unannounced. That's the thing we need to be ready for, just in case. So if you decided to come to China, more than likely the only ones out of this list you would end up needing would be 不好意思, meaning excuse me, or I'm sorry, or 对不起, I'm sorry. More than likely you will not find yourself in any kind of bad situation, and I think you'll probably have a great trip overall. But again, this list is there for you to have, maybe have a screenshot, maybe practice some of these things just in case. All right, that's going to wrap things up for this video. I hope it has been helpful in some way. I hope you've enjoyed it, found it interesting. I want to thank everyone for tuning in and give a special shout out to all of my supporters, those of you who have been supporting me here on YouTube, those of you who support me on Patreon.com, and those of you who have bought me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com. You all are true legends, and I cannot thank you enough. Before you go, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I've got a lot more informative videos, cultural videos, travel videos. I've got a whole lot of content in the pipeline, and I'm very excited to share it with all of you. So we're going to wrap things up right here. We'll catch you all in the next video. Xiaozi, zaijian.